Welcome to our online Sunday Reflection. For today's reflection, we will be focusing on a reading of Matthew chapter 11. As always, feel free to reach out on my email address in the description of this video. In the first part of chapter 11 of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus is talking and teaching the masses when some of John the Baptist's disciples come to Jesus in front of the crowds to ask him a question. John sent them to ask Jesus, are you the one John said was going to come or should we expect someone else? John was imprisoned at this stage and it just shows how much he must have been suffering and even doubting the mission he had been sent on. John wanted to know if his imprisonment and suffering was part of this path of declaring Jesus' arrival, or has he been foolish, and is he suffering for nothing? Jesus reassures him by sending his disciples back with a message that the blind can see and the lame can walk. Jesus is reassuring John that all is going according to plan. He, Jesus, is the Messiah and his kingdom is on its way. But Jesus does something very interesting. While John's disciples are making their way back to their camels or horses or donkeys to return with the good news Jesus has just imparted to them, Jesus makes use of the opportunity to tackle the issue that indirectly led to John's imprisonment and which would eventually lead to his own death on the cross namely the fickleness of human understanding and the human need to compartmentalize and rationalize. Jesus 
was aware of the fact that John was in prison for baptizing people and declaring the coming of the Messiah. And Jesus knew that he himself would be put to death for upsetting the religious status quo of the day. He says in verses 16 to 19, Now to what can I compare the people of this day? They are like children sitting in the marketplace. One group shouts to the other, We played wedding music for you, but you wouldn't dance. We sang funeral songs, but you wouldn't cry. When John came, he fasted and drank no wine, and everybody said, he has a demon in him. When the Son of Man came, he ate and drank, and everyone said, look at this man, he is a glutton and a drinker, a friend of tax collectors and other outcasts. God's wisdom, however, is shown to be true by its results. For me, this example of Jesus you evokes many memories of my own childhood. When I was a child and I was spending time with other children at family gatherings or parties, we would run around and play all kinds of pretend games. But it would always happen sooner or later that somewhere along the line, someone would become upset because someone is not playing the game the way it should be played. Someone is not doing what they should and doing what is expected of them. The rules were never agreed upon, but someone is breaking the rules. Jesus is telling the religious institution of the time that they are to be compared to children who can't agree on the rules of their own game. When John didn't drink or wear decent clothes and live an isolated life, he was judged as a possessed person. But when Jesus came and he drank and ate with sinners and was constantly surrounded by people, He is called a glutton and a drinker. Jesus is telling the religious leaders of his time that they do not understand their own rules. They make rules that are impossible to follow and apply them as they wish. No wonder they have no peace and no fulfillment. Jesus is teaching the crowd about his kingdom and he is expressing the fact that the kingdom of God is not a place full of religious rules where no one really understands the rules or how to play the game. God's kingdom is not a place of confusion, judgment or discord. Jesus tells them what his kingdom is like in verses 28 to 30. And I want to read this to you from the message translation. Are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Jesus distinguishes religion from faith. Religion is all these things we cannot seem to agree upon, dogmatic issues, ethics, politics, and theological debates. Those things which will keep us very busy, but in the end won't give us peace and understanding of God's kingdom. It can only be found when we turn to Jesus, when we stop applying our own rules and our own understanding to religion and stop making up the rules as we go along. I remember listening to a podcast not long ago called The Confessional. I will put a link to it in this uh, video. This is a program focused on telling the stories of people who have messed up in life and how they have found their way back. One of the interviewees reminded me of a movie I had seen a very long time ago called Contact. This is a movie about a scientist who uncovers a signal being sent from deep space to Earth. And as she decrypts this signal, she realizes that it is a blueprint for some sort of spaceship that will take her to this other planet to meet these beings who sent these instructions. She gets government funding and starts building this very unusual spaceship to go and meet these aliens. The problem, however, is that these blueprints for this vehicle do not include a seat or some form of restraint. What do they do? They ignore the blueprints and install a seat into the spherical vehicle because they believe it is too dangerous to let a person travel in this thing without some form of restraint. Let's see what happens during her travel through the universe. 
initiate drop sequence. On my mark. Ten. Nine. Now we transfer. system. Oh, it's beautiful. They're alive. The seat wasn't part of the plan. The designers and engineers who had put the blueprints together meant well, their hearts were in the right place, but their addition to the instructions provided provided a much more unsafe environment. The violence with which that seat shook reminded the person in the confessional podcast of his experience with religion. He did not fit, fit into the mold of what would be considered a good person or a good Christian. His sexuality and theological beliefs were issues for the church, but he stayed. He said it was like being strapped into that seat and you being told that it's for your own safety, but it is a violent and an unstable place to be. When he took Jesus seriously, when Jesus said that faith is not like religion, that it is not supposed to be a violent, confusing and unstable place, but a place of safety, love and peace. He said it was like unbuckling from that seat and floating in the peace and beauty of God's kingdom. 
I'm going to conclude today with the verses of 28 to 30 from chapter 11 of Matthew's gospel again. And I want us to listen to it again. Let us hear the invitation to unbuckle ourselves from the seats that were not part of God's plan for His church. Let us hear the invitation to be freed from a place of violence and confusion and drift into a place of real lasting peace called God's kingdom. Are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting upon you. Keep company with me and you'll learn how to live freely and lightly. Amen. Almighty Father, who covers the earth in your divine mercy, with a curtain of darkness so that all who are weary may rest, grant us all to rest in you this night. Let your grace comfort and support all who are to spend it in sorrow, in loneliness, suffering or fear. We pray that you give us the courage through your Holy Spirit to unfasten ourselves from places which may seem safe and logical, but only restrain us from experiencing your peace and grace. We commend ourselves into your hands together with all who are dear to us. Strengthen and confirm your faithful people. Stir up the careless, relieve the sick, give peace to the dying, that your holy name may be glorified. In Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.